Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar on Agile Working. Today's webinar will be presented by special guest Bill Farrar from uh, the National Development Director from Risk Management Partners, or RMP for short. So a uh, little uh, introduction. So I'm Sarah Jarvis, and I'm uh, one of the category buyers here at YPO in Corporate and Financial Services. Two of the contracts that I look after is the Insurance Brokerage Framework and the Insurance Placement DPS. So a little bit of background on Phil. So Phil began his career in 1986 with Municipal Mutual and worked at two of their branches before joining the broker world with Aon in 1992, where he stayed for 12 years working as part of their national public sector team. He joined RMP in 2004, where he was responsible for service delivery in the north of England and Scotland, as well as managing his own accounts. Since January 2012, Phil became uh, the National Development Director at RMP. Phil's specialisms include risk financing and tender management, and he has become a recognised speaker at Alarm and Insurance and Risk Conferences. So before I pass it over to Phil, I'd just like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. You have all joined this webinar in listening mode only. Please use the Q&A facilities at the bottom of the screen to ask questions while we did deliver the presentation. We will then go back to these questions at the end. For any questions unanswered, we will re respond after this session. So now over to you, Phil. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Uh, I just uh, initially like to start with a warm welcome to everyone and thanks for joining the seminar. Hopefully you'll be able to take something from it uh, of benefit. Uh, I'd just also like to pay thanks to the YPO team for helping pull to, to, together today's session and in particular Sarah who's got the difficult job of changing the slides whilst based somewhere in West Yorkshire whilst I uh, ask her to and I'm based in Manchester. Uh, I think as uh, the team said, we're going to deal with Q&As at the end, and if there's enough questions we don't get through them, uh, we will issue a, a written Q&A out to everybody. So, Agile Working. Over the past six months or so, I think many of you uh, will have heard one session or more around Agile Working, in particular around some of the, the legal issues and the risk issues which flow from it. And whilst I'm going to cover some of those topics, what I really wanted to give you uh, a flavour was was uh, basically my personal experience, someone that's been doing this, uh, uh, working in this environment for over 16 years now, uh, uh, which contrasted with the first 18 years of my life uh, working in an office environment. I think a lot of what I say will probably resonate with you over the past, like I said, over the past eight uh, months or so. Uh, I'm also going to draw upon experience of my wife, who's now moved to a permanent home worker, having been an office worker. Uh, my daughters who are uh, of an age where they're just starting their career and their working environment is absolutely fundamental to how they may uh, progress within that one one's a, a teacher uh, and I've also spoken extensively with colleagues and clients on how they found the, uh, the, the sort of difference in the working environment. On a personal note what I would say is home working or agile working comes with many positives uh, as does working in an office environment, there's no right or wrong solution for each individual, which depends upon where you are in your own career, your own age, your own personal circumstances. Uh, what I would say, though, is that the benefits of home working have been measured and studied over time, and employers and employees have a duty to try and be the best they can in each and every setting, uh, as, as well as the regulatory and legal duties which flow from it. Uh, just drawn upon the experience of my wife, I think after eight months now she's beginning to see some of the challenges that working from home can present to it, uh, as it were, as well as obviously still enjoying the benefits. So what we're going to try and cover today is a little bit about what is Agile working, where are we today in the scheme of things, uh, and, and if there was, this was a face-to-face -face presentation I'd be asking you if you could tell me where we are. Uh, what's happening with our working environments, what are the challenges and the opportunities to us as individuals, organisations and society at large, what will the future look like, uh, probably more fundamentally what do we want the future to look like, some of the liability issues and what employers and employees can do and then just uh, a summary to put it all together. Okay, I think we've got about uh, an hour or so for the session so hopefully we'll get through all the material. Okay, so what is Agile working? Uh, it can mean many things to different people. For the purpose of today, what we're going to uh, uh, use Agile Working is, is going to be 
really the ability of employees to work remotely from their normal office or working environment and to replicate that, that office environment. Uh, as I mentioned, I started doing it 16 years ago. I honestly did not believe it would work. And I was amazed at how resourceful you can be uh, and how you can actually make, make it work to, uh, to your benefit and that of your employer. The aim is to try and have the same level of performance or as close to as possible as if they were that, uh, working in, in that working environment. And that that's, uh, isn't limited to, uh, but includes access to all electronic data, being able to attend meeting, meetings virtually or by dialing in, preparing work-related documents, and uh, as I'm doing now, uh, being able to prepare and deliver training sessions. Uh, Really, at some point, all of us uh, in our normal place of work will work in an agile environment, uh, be it at home, uh, in a hotel, uh, maybe away at a conference. Uh, it could even be in a Costa Coffee or uh, any other coffee shop. There's plenty of other coffee shops, not just Costa Coffee to, to go in. Uh, and this material is relevant to all those sessions, but predominantly it's going to be uh, focusing on sort of working around from, from home and also for a long period. Uh, in my own mind, when I drew up the material, I was thinking of 12 months or more, and that looks like uh, that's going to be the situation for a lot of people. Okay, uh, so yeah, you can move on to the next slide, thanks. Okay, so uh, where are we today? Well, some of the changes that's, that's uh, uh, occurred, uh, some have been good and some have not been uh, been so good. In, in 20... 50, 100 years from today, the history books will show 2020 as a, as a year which probably changed uh, all our lives and touched us all in one form or another uh, with the pandemic. And with that change, it has brought, uh, 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 well, much change to all our lives. As I said previously, I spent 16 years working at home uh, in, in total peace, really. I never had to share my environment with anybody. Uh, for the last eight months, I've been told by my daughters, I've been told by my wife that I need to uh, control the volume when I'm on the phone, uh, that I can, uh, that I can uh, talk uh, uh, too much and, and over them when they're in the next room trying to work. Uh, uh, I've had situations where we've been fighting over TV controls. Uh, and all of this can become a uh, source of uh, distraction. Okay, as I said, some of the changes have been good and some not so good. It really depends on your personal circumstances and your personal perspective and where you are in your career at that point in time. Um, a lot of the changes uh, started out as temporary. Some are now permanent. As I mentioned, my wife, she started out temporarily working from home. Uh, that is now a permanent change that her employers have rolled out. Uh, and they did that uh, uh, very, very quickly. Uh, a lot of the changes that are going to affect us, uh, some of them will be social, uh, obviously economic, uh, maybe we've saved on the cost of commuting, but then we've lost that possibly with the cost of the additional utility cost of running your own home during the day. Uh, I don't know about everyone else. Uh, Eight Loughborough Close in Manchester is like Blackpool Illuminations, uh, and that was in the height of summer. Uh, some of those changes are also going to be in the workplace. It's going to be a combination of all of those things. Uh, they're going to stay with us uh, really for years to come and not to be too dramatic about it, but we really are living history. OK, so just a, a quick recap on where we are today. So I think it was the 29th of January we had the, the two uh, first cases reported of COVID, which was in York. Uh, during the month of February, the government uh, in the UK suggested the risk was moderate and it was business as usual. Uh, the 5th of March, sadly, we had the first COVID-related death and we had around 100 people infected. Uh, it was probably about this time that our organisations really began to, to move to a genuine phase of getting employees to think about working from home. Certainly travel was suspended for a lot of employees, especially to certain countries. Uh, around the second week of March, employees who didn't already work from home were encouraged to work from home whenever possible. And then that led to the uh, 18th and 19th of March, where we had the full closure of offices and, and schools. And the start of what we probably would say in earnest was the official uh, lockdown. And, it, and it's interesting isn't it, that the first lockdown, how it contrasts or how it feels differently with the second uh, lockdown. Uh, sometime in March, uh, local supermarkets were out of toilet roll, pasta, cleaning products, rice, 
uh, 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 we were sourcing some on the internet where we could. Uh, hand, hand sanitizer was trading like it was in the gold market, and and the world was just uh, just felt like a mad place now, really, without without any uh, shadow of a doubt. Uh, so what 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 we used to do? Okay, so uh, who can recall on a Thursday night, eight o'clock, standing on your doorstep, applauding anxious and care workers? Uh, uh, quizzes became uh, topical both socially and uh, within within work. I know we we had a couple, uh, as it were. Uh, hundreds of schools uh, were encouraging pupils to put up paintings and spread hope of the, the rainbow, which I think. Uh, certainly when we walk around our neighbourhood, we still see quite a few of those paintings up. Uh, uh, like I say, I, I, actually, I was genuinely surprised when I, when I walked around the neighbourhood, actually found what we, what we actually, where I lived and what was there. Uh, uh, after about three months, the official lockdown, uh, certainly in England, uh, uh, began the easing of the, uh, uh, the measures coming out of it on the 4th of July. And it began this phase of, uh, what you might want to call almost like the hokey cokey. Certainly, the borough I lived in, uh, I couldn't tell you the rules really from one week uh, to to the next uh, in many respects. And the the the, the sort of release of uh, lockdown was really all anticipated. There's going to be a second wave that was going to hit us by October and November. Uh, apparently, su suggested intelligence is that uh, just before Christmas it could be at, it, at its worst and I think that was part of the reason why the steps have been taken now to create the second lockdown that we've got now. Okay, uh, and obviously it didn't let us down, the second lockdown has, has come. Thanks, Sarah. Sorry, sorry, my apologies. Sarah. Uh, yeah, so uh, we've got a situation now where we've got the, this new agile working. Uh, Sarah, yeah, you can move to the next slide. Thank you. And the modern day office is uh, there's a picture of Sarah's uh, uh, semi detached in, uh, in Wakefield. And that is the modern day office. We're now working from home uh, and we're all beginning to get used to it to some extent. Uh, it's amazing how things have changed. Uh, when, uh, when, 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 like I say, I've been working from home when my wife's group for, for work, uh, the hairdryer, the lights would go on, uh, she could run, uh, run tandem with an RAF jet in the morning with the amount of noise it was made. If I was getting a, an early morning train, I'd be feeling around in the dark for my shoes and, and suit, and uh, it wouldn't be the first time I turned up at a meeting with a pair of odd shoes on. Uh, one one stiletto and one uh, one brogue, uh, but the but the point was that was life, wasn't it? Now it's completely different. Now we have to share our home life and our home environment with our working environment. Thanks, Sarah. We can move, move over. Thanks. So, agile working. As said previously, uh, I joined RMP sixteen years ago. Uh, I was really nervous about whether or not I could adapt to working from home. It suited me because of my personal circumstances uh, that uh, at, at the time. Uh, and I, like I say, for me personally, it's it's been great. RMP. We've worked this model for over twenty five years now, so we do have some experience of how to make it work and the, the, the pitfalls, uh, uh, as it were. Uh, I think what the current uh, opportunity has brought, though, is an opportunity for a lot of companies and organisations to accelerate the process by demonstrating the benefits of it, uh, and more importantly, that employees can work from home uh, and the benefits that it can bring. Uh, you do need to make some sensible adjustments, uh, with, without doubt. Uh, one of the things that I found, first of all, is I started off working on my lounge table. Uh, after six months, I, I just had to decamp into a bedroom. That was an ideal and eventually after three years I had to move so I could get a property with an office space in it. I was fortunate I had, I had that opportunity to do that uh, as it were. I think one of the worries that I have around the process I see with a lot of friends and, and family uh, is that there's almost a, a, a desire to rush the process through as it were and uh, for many people they probably just feel glad to still, still have, uh, have some form of employment. Uh, and they can remain silent as to whether or not they think it's right for them or whether it will work for them. Many people won't appreciate the inverted commas dangers potential or the challenges that it may it may present. And of course, once the offices are shut and gone, well, that's it. You know, they're not going to be coming back anytime soon, are they? Uh, something I would certainly uh, encourage all employers to think about is. Uh, what they want the workforce of the future to look like. Uh, the plan 
like I say, can work now. Everyone is sort of pulling together in a sort of community spirit. But are they storing up liabilities for the future? How many workers have had a risk assessment undertaken? Not my wife's not had one undertaken. Uh, I've uh, had a self risk assessment. My uh, health and safety team sent me a form and I filled it in probably about three or four years ago. Whether my desk, my chair, my office environment is ergonomically sound, who knows really? Yeah, thanks, Harry. Yeah, you can move forward. Thank you. Uh, so the key is really whatever path may lay ahead for us, uh, if we don't return to uh, some form of office based working, we're going to have to make some real adjustments to the sort of permanent relocation from working. Uh, a lot of organisations send there'll be a hybrid of the two, and I can see that come in. Uh, I spoke to a, to a colleague yesterday, one of our partner insurers, and uh, they were explaining they've always done one day a week from home, they're now going to do between two and two and a half days a week, uh, which will probably mean that his employer will actually, at some point, reduce the number of desks that they have, and they'll have a, a hot desk uh, uh, situation, uh, as it were. Uh, as I said previously, you know, it is really important that the benefits or the challenges that's presented by agile working are considered over the long term, and that they are measured over the long term, and there's going to be a massive impact on uh, social e economically. Where, where I live, we have, uh, we're fortunate to have a tram route into Manchester. A lot of the little coffee, uh, uh, coffee shops and cafes that were set up around the tram stops have disappeared and they've closed because it just isn't the commuters coming in to keep them viable. Uh, as I said, it, 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 it felt to me as though it was uh, quite easy to grab hold of all the immediate benefits and possibly not see the wider long-term picture for us all. Uh, so we're going to have a look now, really, like I say, and just go through some of the advantages and disadvantages of working from home and what it can uh, what it can bring. Okay, so what do you what do you need uh, working from home? Uh, first of all, I think every organisation needs a clear vision of what the work environment for that company will now look like how that model will enable that organisation to achieve its objectives. This needs to be communicated to all staff clearly. Uh, they need to understand their role uh, within, the, within the process, how they can contribute to it. Uh, 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 and it's preferable, I think, if this is pulled together in the form of some kind of policy document. Not only does a policy document allow you to communicate it to everybody and everyone can have access to it, it gives you an opportunity to review the position annually or however frequently as an organization you feel uh, you, you want to. Uh, whatever vision you have, it needs to remain dynamic. Believe me, uh, I can guarantee your work environment now will be different in five years time. Uh, circumstances will dictate that. Uh, ju just the, the use of technology is rapidly changing. Even now, you know, uh, two or three years ago, I wouldn't have thought it was possible to speak to everybody in the way that we, we are now around it. Uh, some roles just aren't suitable for it. Uh, an obvious one would be things like refuse collection, but there, there are some roles which it just do not uh, lend itself uh, to it. Okay, uh, you do need investment in IT without a shadow of a doubt. The uh, IT system I've got now, uh, I moved to a different broadband provider. Uh, in the early days, I was literally probably spending two hours a day on the phone to my broadband provider trying to get a more reliable connection. Uh, your employer uh, does need to invest in, uh, in, in your systems and the quality of the, the uh, IT that you have. You do need a committed and a skilled workforce. Uh, uh, there may be some training required, there may be some uh, uh, skilling required, and that's something that would ask you all to uh, think about. Uh, I genuinely feel that working from home is something that's much easier to aspire to when you've had the benefit of a working environment. I had 18 years in it. So for me, the, the adjustment was relatively uh, relatively straightforward, uh, I say. Uh, can you imagine when you first start work, though, we've got some uh, uh, relatively uh, 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 youngsters who are starting their career based in our London office. They're working from home. Some of them have got a shared house. They've been sat in their bed. Some have been working on uh, an ironing board because everyone thought it was short term. It, it's going to be a year before we even think about moving back into some of our office environments. And I know it's been really difficult for uh, a lot of them. Uh, so it is something to ponder. You need to trust your employees. You need to feel that they're going to work. They're going to 
uh, be committed to it. And the employers, employees need to trust their employers to make sure that they don't lose sight of their needs and also their career, which is a point I'm going to, uh, I will touch upon about promotion and so forth. Uh, if it's collect, if it's structured correctly, thought through, and you get a, a, a proper work uh, uh, work station with a risk assessment, uh, that that can be a great boom. Like I said, the key is that everybody has the setup at home where they have the benefit of uh, maybe having somewhere in the house that can be a separate area. And again, I go back to people who are often starting out their career. Uh, my daughter, my oldest daughter and her boyfriend, they have to share their workstation because their house isn't big enough for them. So one's on the kitchen table, one's in a, in a spare bedroom, uh, uh, as it were. Uh, staff need to have a clear guidance of what's expected of them. Uh, some organisations, I feel, have transferred the, the time that's been saved commuting into the expectation that that's maybe when you should be working. You need to encourage staff and empower them to say, no, you know, I'm going to finish at five o'clock tonight or five thirty or if I've done you know a 12 hour day on the Monday it's okay to do six hours on the Tuesday. Staff need to have the confidence that they can finish early if they if they want. Bearing in mind or that they've uh, uh, been doing you know been doing everything that they need they need to do. Uh, you're gonna have some kind of structure and some kind of guidance to them. I know it sounds obvious to say take regular breaks. I, I, I'm really really poor at it. The only time I have a break is if I go for a cup of tea, which I'll be honest with you, I do more now because my wife's at home because we share it. But before that, I'd probably have one in the morning, maybe 20 minutes for lunch, if that, and that'd often be a sandwich sat at my desk. Uh, I, I bought, well, about 18 months ago now, one of these step counters, and I was amazed how little movement I did during the day when I was still at home. Uh, so it is important that staff do, uh, do have some guidance around it. And things like wireless headphones can just make a real difference to, uh, uh, to how they can operate. Uh, you do need an understanding family and housemates no distractions when my children were young uh, it is no lie or no exaggeration to suggest that I'd be sat in my office and I'd pick them up from school and they would literally burst into my office while I was on the phone arguing and fighting about who the TV controls uh, late afternoon can mean some distractions uh, uh, long term it isn't always possible just to say to people uh, can you can you wait while I complete my work you have to probably need to plan how your work might look uh, children coming home might need help with homework if they're young and might need to be supervised these are all challenges which bit by bit you need to sort of almost step like a jigsaw into that working environment uh, you need to have self-discipline. You need to know when to start and stop work. Uh, it took me five years to uh, 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 really get a better handle on when when I should finish work and when I shouldn't. I, I try and set myself a time during the day now uh, that no matter what, I will finish. Uh, I don't. I used to sit for years and years. I'd have my BlackBerry or my email device sat on the settee with me. And at night, I'd be checking emails that were coming in. Why? I don't know, I felt I felt it was the right thing I wanted to do. I was genuinely some, some of them was interested in. Uh, uh, but you've got to give people, it, it's fine, you know, a year, two years, three years, you might be okay like that. 10 years, 15 years, you'd be exhausted. I think it's Volkswagen who have introduced a system whereby emails cannot be physically sent or received after five o'clock or 5.30 at night. I mean, I'm certain there may be some exceptions to that, but that was a discipline they introduced to try and, uh, manage or influence the way in which their staff was working. Uh, uh, I've already mentioned you do need a, a proactive HR department who can lead management through the requirements of, uh, uh, of it. Someone needs to take the lead with the process uh, and it is worth canvassing the opinion of people who have genuinely worked at home for a number of years and understanding them because certainly a lot of people would say to me, well, I've worked from home, you know, I did one day a week. Working one day a week at home is not the same as being there five days a week. Uh, certainly I feel, uh, and, and it'd be open to debate if we were face to face, I don't think the period, certainly the first period of lockdown was a true test of agile working. I think there was many elements that came together to make it work together. First of all, we, we had a sort of community spirit that we're all in it together. We all wanted to come through the pan pandemic. 
we all had a fear of, of where our uh, futures may be. In a general scheme of things, you can do six months at a kitchen table maybe, or, or even a coffee table. Can you work like that for 10 years uh, or longer? Certainly, certainly no. And I think the second part of lockdown now, and certainly going into 2021, it will begin to uh, balance itself out and get some quiet kind of equilibrium as to exactly how we all feel uh, about working from home. Uh, like I say, it's important for organisations to recognise that the period of lock lockdown may have been a successful test. The real test, though, and the real work begins now. Uh, 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 once uh, we can get back to possibly working in office, if indeed offices are uh, available and face-to-face -face interactions. Uh, and for every organisation, probably some, uh, certainly probably not all, but certainly a large proportion of the workforce will probably remain working from home uh, on a permanent basis. Uh, a lot, a lot is talked about uh, mental well-being in the sense of isolation and loneliness. And uh, I've uh, sort of in the 16 years, I had a long period when uh, although I was in relationships. I actually did uh, was working, uh, living on my own, as it were. And you know, if if you now went about seeing people uh, either socially or through work or whatever, you can get a sense of isolation, uh, as it were. And for an awful lot of people, the daily trip into work, that commute, just being in the company of other people, even if you don't know them, if you're, you know, you're sat next to them on a tram or a train or a bus or you're driving to work, you listen to the radio, that is a key, important part of the fabric of people's lives and social life. And I, I don't think it should uh, ever be underestimated uh, that uh, the sense of isolation can creep up on people. It won't happen necessarily overnight. It can happen over many months and years of agile working. Uh, probably about three months ago now, I was talking to uh, to someone in, in, in the insurance market and they, they were relatively young. They'd just bought a flat just before lockdown. And it, it was, you know, they're quite emotional. They were saying, you know, of all the things they anticipated, that loneliness was not the thing that they thought they'd suffer from because they had a full and vibrant social life connected with work. Uh, 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 as I've, well, certainly uh, when I was in an office, uh, maybe you know you might go for a drink at lunchtime or uh, a coffee or a bite to eat or you might see colleagues after work and that was all part of your social interaction where, where does that happen now you know you might talk to people but you don't really have that interaction with them in the same way that you uh, that you did uh, it'd be an interesting question wouldn't it how many people would honestly take their current job uh, now if they knew it was going to be working from home full time uh, I would, would I have done it? That's a good question, really. Uh, as it were, I, I miss getting out and seeing people. I miss doing this presentation face to face to everybody. Uh, I wish I could ask you questions. I wish I could engage with people. Uh, and I, I really do miss that. And if someone said to me, "If this would be your life going forward and your working environment," I don't know whether I made the jump. Uh, one of the points that I, I do believe in, I and mean, this is drawn upon the experience of, of people I've worked with, uh, I do think it is, it is suitable for people of a certain age. I think if you've got 10 or more years of office life behind you, I think you're probably often ready to, to work from home. You've got the self-discipline, you've got the understanding, you've got the comfort of the position where you are in, in your own career. Your employer knows you, they trust you. And, and it has benefits to uh, uh, to both people. I think for younger people, it can be more challenging. I was speaking to an insurance officer a couple of weeks ago, and they've had to make arrangements for one of their inspectors to work in the office full time because they were young. And they basically said that they realised after two or three months, they just weren't doing anything. They basically sat playing PlayStation all day. Uh, a question I would ask every individual and I think every employer is, is what, what do we want our world, uh, you know, our working environment is part of our world, what do we want it to look like in 10 or 20 years from today? Uh, what do the people who are under 30, what do they want? Uh, you know, 20 years of working out of your back bedroom uh, compared to 20 years of being in a vibrant, vibrant office, it's an interesting one. By the time I finish my career, hopefully, I'll probably have worked from home uh, for over 26 years. Uh, and it's an interesting question, it would, would, you know, which was a better balance? Was it working in the office? I, I would not have the knowledge and understanding of accumulated 
the, 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 the sort of uh, bedrock of uh, insurance understanding and knowledge I've got today. I don't believe if I had not had the benefit of working in an office around learning people who I could talk to when I came in from a meeting, if it had been particularly difficult, if I had policy queries with people who would just take time to, to have a cup of coffee with you and just spend two or three minutes talking through policy wording or how to deal with a difficult uh, situation. Uh, it, it, and it does make you make you wonder, doesn't it? Uh, thanks, Sarah. We can we can move on. Uh, some of the solutions that you might want to think about, uh, particularly if you're managing staff. Uh, obviously, if you're managing a team of two hundred, it might not be as easy. Uh, I, I do think sometimes home visits are important. Uh, what, what, one of my colleagues, we we meet up. Uh, we've started meeting up mid midway. Obviously, not not this month, but we meet up midway uh, once a month and just have a bit of a chat in, in person. I'll be honest with you, it's Tesco's. You know, it's not exactly. Uh, 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 luxurious by any stretch of imagination, but we felt it was important, even though we speak every day on the phone, just to get out of the office environment and just have that bit of bit of one to one, as it were. Uh, I, I think if you can visit people at home or you can get to see them face to face, I think it's important because I think you can sometimes see signs that people might be struggling uh, for with many different things in life not not just in their own environment but you won't always pick up over the phone or you might not see on a, on a video conference call uh, as it were and i often uh, uh, assimilate that so if someone was sat in, in an office next to you and you noticed there was something up with them uh, you know they were quiet or they hadn't been themselves for two or three weeks you'd have a quiet word with them you might even go to your manager and just say look i think there's a problem you know just just you know maybe have a, have a chat with them i think it's too easy when people are sat at home for that kind of situation to not to go unrecognized uh, if you do have the benefit of an office, try and get the employees in, uh, certainly fortnightly or monthly. Uh, and, and as I mentioned, uh, just encourage other members of staff to be vigilant and report any concerns. Just as it, like I say, as if you was in the office. I think so. Uh, some things on a personal well-being, it, it may sound obvious, but I do think it's a really good discipline to, to get up, uh, have a routine, get dressed, shower, whatever you do. Uh, exercise. Uh, I've even showed you a picture of me there. I did. I, I took that picture for a reason, not, not this presentation. But I have to demonstrate. I just ran five k. Uh, and if you think a lot by day, you should have seen me after I finished. Uh, uh, but that's something that I've introduced. Uh, uh, joining the gym, going out for a jog, for a walk. Uh, like I said, if you get the opportunity to meet up, I think it is really, really worthwhile taking the opportunity. Take regular breaks. Get up. Uh, it's a sunny day now in Manchester. This morning it was absolutely blown a gale. During the summer, we could go and have a cup of tea outside. Uh, I'll be honest with you, much to my, I'd be sat there agitated, wanting to get back to my emails and doing my presentations and everything else. Uh, my wife was more, she's got much better discipline than me. She was more inclined to say, no, just have a 10 minute break and have a cup of tea and just get away from it, as it were. Uh, try and minimise noise and distractions. I have a colleague and they listen to the radio which they obviously turn the sound down when they take a phone call. Uh, I've tried to work without distractions, I'll be honest with you. The first five years I had a TV in my office and the only reason I had a TV was so I could check on uh, football transfers on the final day. And I might have watched the odd football game or something like Wimbledon, but I eventually I removed that for, for a variety of reasons. But you, you have got to try and have that environment. Uh, uh, try and plan food and drinks. I, you know, Again, you know, I don't mean about half an hour about fun work with my wife. If I was at home here, I wouldn't think about lunch until I went downstairs into the kitchen. I'd see what was there. Is it a can of soup? Is it crackers and cheese? Is it a sandwich? My wife's much better discipline. She'll get stuff out of the freezer. She'll say, we're having this, we're having that. So, you know, I, I, and I can see the benefits of that now. You know, I probably wasn't eating best. If I was in a rush, it could be a cake, you know. So it, it just it, just things like that can can help. Uh, if you can get out of the house in daylight, by all means do so, even if it's just going for a walk on the block or walking to the, to the news agent to pick a paper up or something. Uh, this is something I dealt with probably pretty badly to start off with, but I now try and explain to people what time, you know, when I'm here in my office, I'm working. One of the problems I found is I think my family thought that because I was sat at home, I wasn't really working. It was like toy work. 
you know, people would come in and show me a pair of flip flops he'd bought, or you know, Amazon's just delivered this. What do you think of it? And I'd be like, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't come into my office and show me that. You wouldn't ring me up and say I put you on video conference calls so I could show you a pair of shoes I bought. And yeah, that's what it was like. And for me, I had to try and just get some boundaries. I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, I, I was happy to see people, else, but at some point I did think, you know, I mean, it, you know, people just say, you know, can you just drop us here, take us to the shops, do this, do that, put a wash on, you know, uh, empty the dryer. I don't get me wrong, I, you know, and they were all uh, benefits there. So, uh, like I say, uh, find a time to start, find a time to try and switch off. And if you are fortunate enough to have a door, try and close the door. I think it's really important. I, I will touch upon this, but one of the things I really missed when I used to commute was I'd leave the office, uh, I'd drive home, I'd, I'd listen to the radio, I'd listen to a certain programme, I'd had certain touch points where I had to be by this roundabout by the time the news came on or whatever, because I knew I was on time to then be home in time for my evening evening meal. And when I got home, I was ready to be whatever I needed to be, you, you know, uh, a, a husband, a father, whatever. I close the door now, walk down into the kitchen. It's probably a five second walk. And I'm still thinking about that last email I sent. Was a ton of it right? I did I rush it? I've copied in somebody I shouldn't have done. GDPR. God almighty, I've got it tattooed on my eyeballs. Uh, and that's all part of that rushing uh as it, it, it were uh, uh working long hours this this can be closely linked with a sense of loneliness and, and isolation but like i say it is easy for employers to or employees uh, to convert and certainly i did that i did that 16 years ago and i still do it today the, the time you'd spend commuting you you, you spend working in the office I, I probably start about 7 30 finish any time between five and six you know that that's probably I, I used to leave home at 7 30 try and get in the office for about quarter past eight uh, and i'd probably leave the office about quarter to six something something like that uh one of the things or one of the disciplines i certainly found that i missed was actually having somebody to, to go home uh usually when the cleaners used to come around that would be a a a, 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 a a nod to you know maybe you've been in the office too long that day as it were and i think this is where family can play an important role and can sometimes act to check on the hours that you spend uh, working working uh, as it were uh i've already covered this point about the fact that the time spent commuting did act the natural barrier uh like I say, if anybody who's been working from home for a long time will recognise the dangers of not fully engaging with the family, not fully turning off from work, because you're still thinking about actually what is going on, because you, you, your work and your family environment has sort of become blended almost into, into one. Uh, the temptation to do a, a few a few hours on a Saturday morning. Why not just click on and just uh, keep things ticking over? What, what about Sunday afternoon? You know, get a few hours in. Uh, Sunday night even the thing is where does it end where's the visibility people I get emails all times a day and night from people nobody really picks up the phone and says you know what, what were you doing Sunday now it might be that we're working Sunday because it's took Friday morning off to do something you know it might be morning alone I, I, I don't know uh, but it, it's just it, it's fine as a one-off it's fine over 12 months it's not healthy over a long sustained period of time uh, and unless it's something that you really enjoy with a passion and you feel it is right for you to be working these long hours uh, i think every employer i think every manager i think every team leader should speak to the people who uh, report into them and explain to them what they think the working day should look like is, is it now well five what are the core hours? Is an opportunity for flexi time. Uh, I, I kid you not, and, and I absolutely, we have no problem with this. We know some of our uh, colleagues might go and get their hair cut during the day, you know, because they might have done a 15 hour day the day before. Uh, it, it saves cutting into time with family at weekend. And that's all part of that balance. And certainly one of the, the understandings that we have within r &P is that so long as the, the, the work is done and we do, manage and we try and monitor the workloads that people have uh, at any one moment in time as long as it's done you know and the, 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 you're there for clients and so on we're not 
too rigid about whether you're doing a nine well five or an uh, eight well four or a ten well six. You know, we do give people that flexibility because I think we recognised a long, long time ago that working from home is a challenge. It does come with challenges and there needs to be a balance uh, uh, around it. It's part of the deal, if you like. Uh, like I say, you know, often I speak to people now and I go, oh, you know, I need to go over and pick up the children from school. Uh, and, and that is part of the, it's part, like I say, it's part of the deal, isn't it? Meshing together uh, the, 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 the benefits of, of, of home life and personal needs. It's a really good question. Is how do you manage performance? Uh, do you is it when someone turns their computer on and off? We know electronically all this information can be measured. Is it the, the amount of email traffic? Uh, how would you measure it in the office? You know, uh, would you see someone sat there spending three hours on eBay or Google? How, how would how would it look? Uh, I've chosen Magnolia because if you can see me on video, I think that's what the colour of these walls are, the, the cell as we call it. But, you know, uh, sitting looking at four walls like this uh, for, for, you know, year after year does take its toll. Uh, and I've already covered this point off about would you have taken a job, uh, as it were. And I think these are all genuine questions which employers uh, and employees all need to ask themselves. And at some point in time, you will need to address them either as an employer, as a manager, as a team leader and personally if you go to a, an agile form of working. Okay, uh, this is really some, some guidance, I think, really for in individuals, uh, as it were. Uh, uh, limit your hours to a sensible balance. Uh, like I say, it did take me ten year, uh, five years to really, really understand that, uh, as it were. Uh, something else I've introduced in the last 12 months or so is I try and spend a few minutes. The, the last thing I do from a work perspective is usually the most simplest thing I can do that day or the easiest thing. It just allows me to switch off from that intense level of thinking about concentrating on work and begin to move into, you know, uh, 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 being, being a partner, as it were, and a, and a parent. Uh, uh, not always possible, you know, we all sometimes only have to work the odd weekend, but I try and organise it now as best I can so I don't work weekends. At one point, I did an awful lot. When I look back, I don't know to, was it of any real benefit? I, it felt like it was at the time. Uh, this is really a, a point that someone pointed out to me actually mid uh, lockdown. I thought actually it's a really good, really good point that this uh, thinking time, as it were, or quality time. So I, I used to do a lot of commuting to London by train, and I would often uh, uh, take with me on the train material that I might need to have a read of or have a little think about. I might be going to a, to a meeting. The meeting might be, you know, what I'm looking forward to. It could be a difficult meeting. And you think about how you're going to approach the meeting, the personalities, and you'd, you'd, you'd have a plan as such. When you arrived at the meeting, you were ready to go and you knew what you were doing. Equally commuting, you could think about things. That 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 we've that's gone from us, hasn't it? You know, uh, uh, certainly, you know, I think a lot of us probably have, you know, one back to back meeting after, after another. I've noticed the volume of email traffic has increased an awful lot over the last six months because more people are at home and more people are sat from their computer and so forth. And it's very difficult, I think, uh, when you are sat at your desk, particularly at home, just to turn off your emails and turn everything off and give yourself uh, half an hour thinking about an issue as to how you're going to tackle it. You, 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 you know, and that's a discipline that certainly I've not got yet. And it's one that I'm trying to uh, become better at doing, really, and trying to give myself some time to think about things. And it might be that before I turn my computer in the morning, that's something that I've done when I've just thought about what the day is going to be like and how I need to approach some things before I got too involved. Uh, video conferencing. Uh, well, how many people, uh, we all started off originally, we'd have internal meetings, everyone would be on the conference, everyone, you could see each other. Now you don't see anybody. Why? Because uh, my guess is that I'm silent and they're cracking up with their emails. I know that because I see emails coming through while I'm talking to people. Uh, uh, you wouldn't do it in a meeting or you'd like to think people wouldn't do it in a meeting. So why should a real conference be any different? Uh, video conferencing, does it work? Uh, when I posed that question, uh, I, I, I feel it works better now than it did three or four months ago, certainly for me and certainly for RMP. 
Uh, the technology seems to be improving all the time. We've invested in some better better kits. That's getting better. But it does seem that there's teams. I think we're on Zoom today. Uh, we use WebEx. Uh, that there's there's other platforms. It would be great if we could have one common platform uh, that we could all use. Uh, I think video conferencing works really well in a meeting set up with people uh, who you know well. And how do you know them well? Because you spent years face to face with them. It doesn't work as well, in my view, with people who you're trying to build a relationship with who you've never really met and spent any time in their, in, in their company. Uh, yeah, and I've already made, made, made that point there. Does it work well with people you've never, you've never met? Uh, how do you deal with a difficult issue or a problem which requires tactical diplomacy? Uh, how, how do you maintain a good working relationship post the discussion. There could be 10 people on the call. How do you get the points across that you want to mention? How often do you hear two or three people go to speak at the same time? Uh, I have no doubt video conferencing is going to continue and I will be the first to say well, I've certainly attended some video conferencing meetings which has been an absolute benefit. I can think of two or three where it have been a trip to London or a drive into Manchester uh, for a one hour meeting and we've done them over the video conferencing. There's been two or three of us on the call and it's been really good uh, but, but it's not the solution I think for everything. Uh, uh, and we even, I went on a call about three months ago and somebody, we said, why don't we all turn our videos on? And somebody said, I've not got, I've not got any makeup on. Uh, I'm not saying it's a boy or a girl, uh, but it, it just, it, you know, it's just, they didn't want to put the video on because of that very, very reason. Okay. Uh, it was something so I'm actually suffering with this myself now. So, both my shoulders uh, and my wrist uh, last couple of months become really, really sore. Uh, and I just think it's just the angle that I'm at. And it's because I'm spending five days a week now sat at this desk, whereas before it was maybe two and a half days or three days, as it were. And it is a real challenge. I mean, it, you don't know pain until you've got it, really. And I think, you know, if someone said to me in my 20s and 30s that sat working a mouse could cause you uh, uh, issues, I wouldn't have necessarily believed it, but it does. Uh, and I think for this reason, you've got to make sure things are ergonomically sound. Uh, like I say, you know, your foot rest can't be the family pet, can it? Uh, and I've, well, I've just already mentioned that point there, uh, and that's something that I am uh, genuinely addressing. Uh, 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 who has an unsuitable chair? Every chair you sit at when you start working will feel fine for the first couple of days, the first week. It might feel fine for a couple of years. Ultimately, if it isn't right, it will catch up with you. Uh, Data management, uh, I, I'm not too certain how much sensitive data you may or may not have at home. Uh, we have, uh, I mean, a part of my office environment is actually we have, I have a lot of cabinets for some material around claims where I may need to, to print the file off and keep it uh, for, for a while. Uh, we've got a, I've got a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, a, a thing under the desk to, uh, 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 to destroy all the paperwork and everything else uh, but it does open up new challenges and organizations employers and employees need to be aware of those challenges that it can present to uh, to working at home uh, i think everybody needs to do what we refer to as a data protection impact assessment or a, a dipa really just to make sure that the agile working environment is picked within that it, it probably is for a lot of organizations already because home working is nothing new but the move to, you know, 70% of your workforce working from home might present a different challenge. Uh, you'll be aware of this. VPN networks, they can make a, a secure environment for transfer of data. Uh, 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 I, I personally like a paper file. I find it difficult to read some complicated uh, documents, uh, particularly if they run to hundreds of pages and I've got to work through them. I, I like to sometimes have a file there so I can mark things on it. It might be something that I read one day and I, have to, I only get halfway through and I have to pick up the following day and so on. How would you keep those, those safe uh, if they're at home even for a, a temporary period? 
uh, and as I mentioned, uh, do you have a lot of cabinets and rooms? Uh, and I said, <laughs> can't be the sideboard. Does anybody have a sideboard? We, we had them as kids, uh, where, where you've got last year's Christmas cards. Uh, how many employees are using their own equipment? Hey, their own screen. Uh, my screen is not a work one, it's my own because it's bigger. So, uh, yeah, so as much as I think about it now. Uh, sorry, sorry, yeah, we can we can move on. Uh, uh, we can we can run through these fairly quickly now. In terms of the key opportunities uh, for an employee, well, you've probably realised this already. It can certainly help with care arrangements for children if you've got any elder relatives. So you can you can keep on them. Reduces the cost of commuting, both the strain on you and the actual cost in your pocket. Uh, can help with childcare, pet care costs. You know, uh, it, it can create a stronger connection with your family and friends. You're going to see them more, hopefully, and be around, and they may be a little bit more in, in contact with you. Uh, greater personal time and flexibility. Uh, you, you, you can go and do a bit of exercise in the morning sometimes, get out on the bike. Uh, I, one of my colleagues, uh, I regularly see that 6 30 morning, he's out on his bike doing things. Would he have done that if he had to get into an office? I, I don't know, but it's one of the great benefits of it, I think. Uh, you can fit work around personal commitments, collecting children from school, uh, catch up on, like I say, domestic chores. It just means that the weekends aren't as uh, crammed as they used to be. And what's the opportunities for an employer? Well, obviously reduced cost, you haven't got the office costs. Uh, greater productivity, people working harder, less distractions. Uh, working potentially for, for longer periods that uh, you can have a more contented and in turn a more loyal workforce because people feel feel happy with the working environment uh, people become more dynamic more adaptable more flexible you realize that you can get things done uh, before now uh, and I have sat on the floor of a town hall with a portable printer printing off a tender before uh, we handed it in to the legal department delivered it and I wouldn't believe it was possible uh, it's not something I recommend, but you know you, you can you can find different ways of doing things. Okay, so what are some of the disadvantages uh, for the employee? Well, can it be a case of out of sight, out of mind? You know, who uh, career progression? I, I've already said that I think working from home is great for people at a certain point in their career. People who are starting out on their career, how do you get yourself noticed? How do you demonstrate your value and your worth to the organisation? And I think it's a responsibility in every uh, manager, team leader, anybody who reports into you to recognise the work that people are doing and try and uh, bring those through uh, as you would do in, a, in an office environment who, who are ready for the next stage in their career. Uh, how easy is it to contribute to a meeting? Uh, a, a meeting face to face is far easier than a video call, certainly in, in my view. Uh, uh, we've already touched upon isolation and loneliness, uh, increased utility bills. Hopefully, your employer might might uh, have something there. How do you share knowledge and learn? We've already talked about. You know, I I feel very blessed in my career. I had people I could come into. I could talk to people. You know, who had forty years experience in the development. You know that. It, it, it just adds to your learning and you're moving through your career. How do you capture that when people are working from home? Uh, do you develop bad habits, lack of exercise? When do you ever turn off? Are you going to bed at night thinking about it? Last night, I mean, to be honest with you, I would have done it if I in an office environment anyway. I've got to prepare a prepared report and last night, just before I went to bed, I spent 10 minutes scribbling down things and then thinking about watching Roadkill, the Sunday night drama. You know, I, 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 you know, what I'd have done that as in an office anyway, uh, as it were. Uh, I've already mentioned this point uh, that, that the family can see you, therefore they assume you're not working, even though it's two o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, uh, I think some challenges really, maybe disadvantages is, is an unfair word, but I think some challenges. How do you control employee well-being? You know, uh, in the short long term, how do you measure productivity? How do you understand that somebody's doing 12 hours producing the same stuff and someone's doing six hours producing the same stuff. How, how does all that get measured and understood? Uh, how do you make people feel part of the team and included, uh, 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 as it were? Uh, a, bi a big one, and I'm certain every uh, CEO in the land must get up every morning and think about this, whether it's an office environment, whether it's a factory, whether it's a building site, how do you mobilise and energize your workforce every day to be the best they can be. Uh, what do you do when a key member of staff is leaving? Uh, possibly taking what intellectual property with them, 
all too often these days, I think there's a tendency that people do leave organisations and, and I think they just take a lot of knowledge with them. And I don't think organisations, employers are very good at, at, at retaining that knowledge within the organisation. Once that person's gone, often, very often it's gone. So uh, uh, just thinking about sort of what the future might look like and some of the decisions that people might have to make. Well, we know central government are trying to get everyone to return to work uh, as soon as it's safe to do so uh, 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 and a safe environment as much, like I say, for the economy as, as anything else. Uh, uh, will, will the workforce come back into its normal place of work? As I say, certainly people I know, uh, uh, people close to me, they, they've employees have made a choice they're now working from home permanently that's it uh will they be asked to return home and continue working from home i know again we're in lockdown what will the situation be like in 2022 uh my instinct is there's going to be this kind of hybrid uh, uh as it were and i think uh, what other organisations may say, well, if you are struggling working from home, get in touch with HR and we'll try and get you back in the office. But if not, hey, we've, we've got rid of your desk. Uh, my wife literally got a phone call and somebody said, what do you want in your drawers? Because we're moving your desk in two days' time. And she actually had to go into the office and get some personal bits and pieces. That, that's pretty much how quickly it was. Okay, I'm just, just conscious of, of time. Uh, Okay, so those of you of a certain age might remember a, a, a British band called The Specials and a song they uh, uh, wrote called Ghost Town, which was written uh, against the backdrop of the economic depression of the 1980s. If I could play it for you, I would now. Uh, I've been to Manchester, uh, I think the third most popular city in the country for stag do's, uh, hen do's. Uh, you go in there uh, some Saturday morning, it used to be full of people, all usually trying around trying to find somewhere to eat and hung over. Now it's really quiet. And what do we want our major cities to look like uh, uh, going forward? So, sorry to say, we can move on. I'm just conscious of, uh, of time. Uh, so what we, what we do know, uh, as things stand at present, we've got quieter city centres, we've got quieter shopping malls, more deliveries to home. God almighty. We, we've got uh, the Amazon guys coming for Christmas dinner. Uh, uh, stores, uh, offices are closing. Uh, we, we used to leave, we used to leave our house and I sat there and go shopping and come back with a load of bags. Now we we'll leave our house with a load of bags to take returns back and come back with nothing. Uh, and it's, it's something we've all got to think about. I don't know, you know, the, the hotel industry, God knows how that's been affected by it all. Uh, the travel industry, obviously, we're aware of how that's affected. So the, these are the social economic things that are really uh, uh, impacting upon us. Uh, we know ledger's getting back to normal. Uh, or, or be it's been suspended for the last four weeks uh, and, and it does feel like uh, whilst the world economy and the UK economy and uh, within that, our own lives are all being sort of reset uh, into some kind of new environment that we've got to embrace going forward. Uh, how much influence do we have as individuals? I'm not, I'm not entirely too certain. Uh, I think collectively we have a genuine voice but as individuals it's difficult sometimes to speak, to speak out. Uh, we've seen shopping habits already changed. Uh, even I, as, as much as I hate to admit it, even I've taken to Amazon to, to buy things, usually the same of what I've already got, just uh, another colour of it. Uh, I, I, I say we've already mentioned, I mentioned a problem about going to shops to make returns. Uh, have people commuted, uh, have people converted the time they don't spend commuting at a leisure time? Probably not. Uh, if you've got a choice working from home or working in the office, what are people going to say? The chances are they want the best of both worlds, don't we? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and in doing so, I think all organisations need to work out a plan, a risk management plan of how that is structured and delivered. Okay, uh, I'm just, like I said, I'm just conscious of time, yeah. sorry, I'm just Robertson on it. Uh, new work, well, as you, you're working down at Monday, breakfast, shower, work, Tuesday's the same, Wednesday's the same, Thursday's the same, Friday's is the same. Oh, hang on a minute, Friday, we've got a virtual coffee chat for 3 p.m. We've got a virtual rooms session coming up internally, whatever that means. Uh, but it's all in the confine of the same room, isn't it? Uh, sorry, sorry, we can, we can fly on. Sorry, I've just remembered to know it really, and I, I do apologise. Okay. Uh, 
No, it's okay. No, no, it's fine. No, I mean, like I say, you know, just a bit about the, the working day there. Uh, just just on some legal things, and we're almost at the end now. I just want to touch upon that are obviously uh, uh, we're conflicted. Next slide, if you want to say that. Right. As employers, you've got a duty under Health and Safety Act for people's well being. The work, working at home is no different. You've still got the same duty. So, long term, organisations can also think about how they manage this uh, and how they make sure that environment is safe. Uh, go on, so we can we can kick on. Uh, what I've provide you with here with, I think you're going to get a copy of the slides if you haven't already. But this is basically something that you can actually go back and revisit this slide and look at it, and it will give you some guidance and tips that, as an organisation, you might want to be thinking about from a risk management point of view, homework and policy, and so forth. Okay. And we, you can, we can, I don't intend to say that. I want to read through these anyway. Okay. This is just really just, just going through all these different points that you need to be aware of. Insurance requirements, what they might look like, how you deal with expenses and so on. It's just... Phil? Phil? You just broke up there. Sorry, we didn't catch that last bit. Oh, oh it, it wasn't any good, Sarah. You can move forward. <laughs> it was rubbish. <laughs> like I say, I'm going to send these slides out anyway. So if anybody's got any questions, uh, they'll come back to me and ask. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, like I say, I, 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 or you, the, the, I know people in the industry have been covering this uh, already, so let's not draw on this too much, but it is stuff you need to think about. So we can, we can, we can click, click, yeah, yeah, click on. Uh, and we, again, just go through this. There is a really good booklet uh, uh, from uh, IOSH on, on working from home, which I think you'd find a real benefit. And just really to summarize and to the final comments, uh, uh, whether we like it or not, agile working is here to stay. I personally it can bring many benefits to the employer uh, and the employee. It isn't without its risks and it needs to be managed uh, uh, carefully. Uh, employees have a duty of care. They've got to look after the emotional, physical, financial uh, uh, well-being of their employees. Uh, each employee has a responsibility too. And that that's not to abuse the trust that their employee invests in them. And it is uh, to try and be the best that they can uh, and to be fair to all those that's affected. Okay. And I think that is it. The last thing I will say, uh, so if you want to flick over to, thank you, just ne the next one. Uh, and this was just something that uh, I, I think like all of us, we're in various social media groups and all sorts of uh, platforms. This was something that somebody sent to me mid first lockdown. Uh, I, I'm not suggesting you read it now, but when you get the slides, it's worth reading because it's certainly for me, and I think for a lot of people who I spoke to, it did place into context the challenges that lockdown uh, can face. You know, for some people, it was a, it says an, a moment to, to 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 reflect and reconnect with family. For others, it was an absolute nightmare. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I do apologise for rushing through at the end. Uh, sorry, go on, Sarah. No, I was just going to say thank you very much, Phil. It's been really, really interesting. That, and some of the things that you've highlighted, I think everybody can relate to it. I mean, one of my things is like, I'm working in my back bedroom and then as soon as you turn off work, you walk downstairs and it's home life. And I'm missing that 10 minute drive from work to home to actually get rid of everything I've learned in the day to turn into Sarah Jarvis home Sarah Jarvis you know what I mean so I I yeah, yeah, did pick yeah, every, yeah. I've picked things up that everybody will be able to relate to today it was very very good thank you thank you thank you Sarah so we have yeah, thanks everyone for listening we haven't had any questions uh, and I am just conscious of the time that we have taken up more than an hour of your time already. But if anybody would uh, has got any questions after uh, today's webinar, I will be sending out the slides. I will be sending out this recording. Just get in contact with, with us and uh, let us know and we will come back to you. So I'd like to thank everybody for attending today's uh, webinar.
I'd like to say a big thank you to Phil um, for doing the uh, webinar because without him we wouldn't be able to do these webinars and I'd just like to wish everybody a good day. Thank you for joining. See you all later. Bye. Thanks Sarah. Bye.